Today's video is gonna be a familiar story for any of you buying a road bike right now. And that is, you're looking to invest in a bike that you're gonna be really proud to own, you're absolutely gonna love riding, but you don't want any nasty financial surprises further down the line. Things are tough out there right now, and if we can make some good sound decisions now, you should have many years of carefree riding to come. In today's video, we are gonna go through what to look for in a frame, component tree, wheels, all that sort of thing, which hopefully will give you the knowledge you need to make some really good decisions about buying a new bike. Also, one of those things we're gonna put in front of you is could you go to your bike shop and have a conversation with your bike mechanic and reuse some of the parts from your old bike onto your new bike and end up with a better build overall than what you can just buy off the shelf. Interested? Let's get started. This is the customer's old bike, an absolutely gorgeous Focus KO, but it hasn't really got the tire clearance and it's obviously not disc brakes that we wanted, but there are plenty of components on this that we could recycle. Now we're gonna be reusing the lovely carbon seat post. We're also gonna be reusing the Altegra crank set, rear mech and cassette as well. So there's still some really good salvageable components on this. And I'm pretty sure that this lovely frame will find a new home somewhere. Now, this is the frame we're going to be replacing it with. This is the Sonelli Veltrix. And there's lots of reasons we've chosen this. And I'm going to point out some details that when you're shopping for your new frame, will hopefully give you some guidance as to what to look for. First of all, it's got really, really generous tire clearance, disc brake, and the geometry was right for the customer. We've had a bike fit and we know this is going to be the right size shape for the fit that we want. But it's got some characteristics in here that are going to make this very, very usable for us. First one I look for is this bottom bracket area. And this actually has an aluminium insert inside the carbon fiber that's a big one piece aluminium insert. And it's threaded and there's a big area of aluminium here, which means that we can get the facing tools on there to make sure that these edges are nicely squared off. It uses a very standard Shimano bottom bracket and this should give you years of trouble free running of nice smooth running bearings without any sort of creaking and stuff. And if it does get any of that, then we can get in there and fix it with tools ready available in every bike shop. That's a winner. The other thing I like to look for is the, the brake facing. So this is using the new flat mount system. Well, not so new anymore. But when you look at these on a new frame, sometimes you'll see that they're just painted over, which is atrocious if you see that. Other times you'll see when they've had like a little bit of masking tape sort of stuck on it to try and give you this bare carbon. You know, but what you're really looking for is the machining marks where it looks like they've actually been machined flat because if these aren't flat, it is going to be an absolute nightmare to stop your brakes from rubbing. And so many bike shops will then have the tools to correct this, but if you're frame and you're building it yourself, you probably won't. And so you definitely want to look for quality like this. It also means if the manufacturer is putting this level of attention to detail in the finishing, they probably put that level of attention to detail in the whole manufacturer. Now, I'm not saying that the Sinelli is anywhere near the standard of something like a look or a time or whatever, but it is very, very good. Even on the inside here, on the headset, you can see where there's no paint over spray, and this has actually been machined to get those right edges so the bearing should sit against a nice flush surface, and that is gonna make all the difference, the little creaking headsets and stuff. Other things I like to look for, is the entry and exit points for any cabling. So I want nice smooth cable runs without any sort of weird rubbing on things on the inside. And so this has uh, cable runs here where we can run this for uh, UK brakes really nicely and create nice cable runs the whole way around as well. So I think this frame is an absolute winner. It's not the lightest in the world, but for its price point around 1300 pounds, I think this is a really good, solid, reliable choice. Also, at this sort of price, and maybe a little bit below, if you really look around, you can find some really good quality aluminium bikes as well. People like Mason, uh, Form Bikes, and Cannondale are probably still making some very good quality aluminium that are arguably only a shade heavier than this carbon offering. You have to spend an awful lot more to get what I'd call considerably better carbon. There's a whole gray area in between where you can spend thousand, fifteen hundred quid and not really notice the difference. It's not until you start spending three, maybe four thousand pounds for a frame 
that you're really gonna start noticing big differences again. Most of the elements that are going to dictate how this sort of bike handles is actually gonna come from its wheels and its tires. So if you're looking to where to invest your money after this, that's where we're gonna start next. We are going for the fast forward Riot 44s. Now you may have seen us feature the Riot 33s in a previous video, the slightly shallower ones, but the 44s really aren't that deep. Now, what you will notice with running the 44 depth is a little bit more steady momentum. I wouldn't like to say they're necessarily more aero than anything else because it's not a massive difference, but what you definitely do notice is it just sort of adds a little bit of momentum to your back wheel and the extra width and stability just helps with the bike handling, that's for sure. They're not really deep enough to have get affected by side winds too much. It'd have to be really, really windy to notice that. But what we are going to really appreciate is that extra rim width. And we're gonna be fitting these up with a 30 millimeter wide tire. Now, these are actually a hooked design, which does open up quite a lot of tire choice to us. And these are still more than strong enough to handle big potholes and a little bit of light gravel use. But the benefits of hooked over hookless I, I like both, to be honest, and if I know that my wheels are gonna be taking a beat in, I would definitely go on the hookless design. The fast forwards also use brass nipples, which means that that galvanic corrosion problem that we've spoken about loads on this channel is a little bit negated. That's definitely something worth looking for in the current market. Don't be tempted by saving just a few grams and having aluminum nipples there. If you're running carbon wheels, brass nipples are just essential like that's it like no argument um, these also use this the steel cx race spokes from sapin really good quality spokes there's absolutely no argument about the quality of these spokes and the wheel build is just fantastic i mean like we can spin these and they are absolutely perfect i'll put them in the trim stand for you later and i think you'll see they are just absolutely spot on dt swiss 240 hubs no argument, one of the best value, reliable hubs on the market. Super simple to service, good standard size bearings. Every bike shop everywhere in the world has the tools and bearings in stock to service these. Just, it's a no-brainer solution. Running these tubeless, of course, it's the future. All right, that is the two most important components that you're going to invest in in your new bike. The frame and the wheels is where you should be spending the majority of your money because they will make more difference than any other part of the bike. And you could probably argue that the wheels make even more difference than the frame. So bear that in mind about where you're putting your money. Now the next important part, because you can't ride a bike without it, is the actual group set. Now, as we mentioned at the start, the customer already had some old Tegra components that they want to carry across. And this is a great way of making sure that we reuse and recycle some great components. And they're in really good condition, so there's no reason why not. However, when you buy the bike as a package, it does come with that Shimano 105. So what's the difference? Are we really saving anything here? Well, let me show you, one, what the bike would have come with, and two, what we're actually going to fit. Okay, the first major case in point is this crank set. This is what the comes fitted on the bike if you were to buy the bike in its entirety, like you bought it off the internet and this is what arrived at your front door. This is what would have been fitted. And it is a cold press, it's heavy. Um, it says FSA on it, but really this is not FSA's finest work. And I have to say, if I was FSA, I wouldn't even put my name to this. This is, this is landfill. Like, you do not need this on your bike. It is heavy. The chain rings are gonna be like cheese. This is not gonna last you very long. Also, it's BB30, which means that this spindle here is 30 millimeters in diameter, which means that we then have to fit some bonkers bottom bracket to get a big fat axle like this through a smaller hole in the frame. So I just wish bike brands wouldn't do this. It saves a few quid over Shimano 105. It might look pretty, but I'm going to put the weight up because it's just, it's just trash. This is what we could have had. This is a Shimano 105 and this is a Shimano Ultegra crank set. As you see, and has been documented on lots and lots of YouTube videos, is they are almost identical. Like the differences are so small. Like the Ultegra is 
a hollow crank. The 105 is a much more solid, dependable, reliable choice. And the weight difference is, it's negligible. <laughs> Other things to consider is this is the rear cassette. This one here is the Shimano 105 model that comes with the bike, 11 to 34 ratio. Um, there's a slightly more weight into this. The Altegra version here has got this aluminium spider on the back that reduces the weight ever so slightly. I Again, it is very, very negligible. I doubt you would even notice, but you know we have a really good quality uh, Altegra one here that's in really good condition, so why not use it? Next up is the rear derailleurs. Again, I think you'll agree, they look absolutely identical. They weigh almost the same. If you really, really get up close and look at the resolution, the Altegra one is definitely finished better. The little adjustment knobs are just slightly nicer finished, but I really, you could not tell the difference in weight. It is, it is so small. So if your bike comes fitted with 105, Great, leave it, it's a really good choice. One thing that is quite cool when we do this as a bike shop is we can actually reuse some of the really good quality components that the customer's already invested in. In this case, really good quality seat post and a really good quality saddle, obviously, but it's the wrong size. So you can actually get seat post shims, which allow us to make sure that this fits into his new bike. Right, some other considerations about, this is where your bike shop can really, really help you out is because Things like this that the bike come with are just junk. Like this is the seat post that would have come with the bike and we'll recycle this. It'll go into the, you know, the teaching studio that we have here. This saddle, it says send, sell San Marco on it. it. It's not, it's an OEM spec. I, I don't know why these good quality brands put their name to stuff like this. It just, same with that FSA crank set, it doesn't make any sense. Why devalue your really good quality brand by making junk? And the same about the bar tape, and this makes no sense to put really poor quality bar tape in this because there's two parts of the bike that you touch, and that is the saddle and the handlebar tape. These are the bits that your skin actually feels. And like using rubbish quality bar tape is just, it's just useless. This is, oh, we're just gonna bin it. With all that in mind, I just wanna think about the, the big picture. And I would say that about 10% of your overall budget is probably gonna be spent on your finishing kit. And what we mean by that is your saddle, seat post, handlebars, stem, bar tape, that sort of thing. They don't make a massive difference to how the bike rides or handles. And also you can get really good quality second hand parts because they don't really wear out. And if you can reduce how much we send to landfill by buying rubbish like that, so much the better. Okay, once you've got that bit nailed, then you can really start thinking about your wheels. Remember, your wheels will make more difference to how your bike feels and handles than anything else. Like in terms of acceleration, cornering, holding momentum, they will do more for you than your frame ever will. Also, remember your tires are crucially important. Like the tires that would have come with this bike stock are pretty poor quality. And those tires are only like postage stamp contact patch between the road and you. So getting your tires right is absolutely crucial. And I would say invest in your tires because they really will give you that confidence that you're looking for. Okay, once you've got that nailed, then start thinking about the budget that you might have left for your frame. And if that means choosing a really good quality aluminium frame and saving a few hundred quid, there's some really good options out there. If you're looking for carbon, try and ignore the junk at the bottom end of the market. You're better off with aluminium. Where this frame sits is good quality carbon with some good finishing characteristics like that bottom bracket, like those dismount facings that we talked about. And then there's like this weird gray area where you don't really get much more for your money until you get right into the top end. And we're talking three, four, five thousand pounds a frame where you're probably gonna start noticing a difference again. And there's this quantum leap in price as well, but the weird sort of 1,500 quid to 3,000 pound price point, I would argue there's not a lot in there that you're going to ever notice when you're riding the bike. Spend that money on your wheels. Okay, with those sort of choices made, the last choice to make is probably your group set. And this is where you can look at your overall budget, see what's left. And if that means there's not much left, 
then the Shimano Tiagra group set is a really, really good option. You know, it works great. 105, good, solid, dependable option. Altegra is like benchmark of which we measure everything else against. If you're spending more than that, you can expect that diminishing returns to start happening. That's uh, your decision. Right, big deep breath. Let's get this bike built and show you the finished product. Let's get going. Right then, we are finished. And I think you'll agree, it looks absolutely stunning. It's a real shame that we had to buy this bike as a package because behind us over on the bench there, there's a whole bunch of junk that nobody needs in their life. And it's a real shame that it's just gonna go straight to landfill. But buying it like this did enable us to get access to some of the components which are out of stock in other places. And because we've had the benefit of the customer's existing bike and been able to reuse some components, we've actually managed to create uh, a really lovely bike here with some really top end components. And we're actually gonna go through how all those prices work with you back in the office in a second. So you get to see what I think is a real benefit to communicating with your bike shop. You know, you've got this, you want this. Let's try and see if we can make that happen with as little cost and as little wastage as possible. That's the sort of discussions that we love having here. And I think any bike shop would love having it as well. If you've got a plan that we can make happen, that, that's what we do, that's what bike shops are here for. If your bike shop is just there to try and sell you what's on the shelf, you, you need to find a better bike shop. Anyway, <laughs> we, um, we talked about these fast forward wheels. I think they look fantastic wrapped up in these Pirelli P0s. These tires are our favorite tires at the moment. They've got a really good confidence inspiring ride feel to them. These are the 30 millimeters. They roll really fast. They're nice and light. They wear okay, I wouldn't say they're most durable, but that's not why we're buying high performance tires. We're buying it for their grip and their road feel and that confident handling. If we want durability, we'd buy something different. Um, we've also made that whole confident ride feel a bit better by using better bar tape as well, because that's the bit that your hands actually feel. So we're using the Pro Logo Nano Touch. It's, um, it's a fairly basic bar tape. It wraps really well and it feels nice against the skin, even when your hands are a bit wet from the rain or from sweat, actually. Um, we think it looks really smart, it works. It's our absolute go-to bar tape. Massive upgrade over the stuff that it would have come with. Um, obviously, fitting that Altegra uh, components where we could. 105 levers, absolutely fine. Really hard to distinguish any sort of difference there. It's the sort of part that you never actually see as a rider, but the hoods and the actual feel against your fingertips is exactly the same. So like, why worry about it? And then obviously just keep in customer's saddle, seat post, bits and pieces like that. Right, let's get over to the office and do some sums. Okay, let's break this video down and see if we can go through some of the costs and see where we ended up. Now, these prices are gonna change, but use this video as a kind of guideline as to doing your own sort of semi-build with your local bike shop, and you won't be far wrong, I don't think, with the general idea of things. Now, this particular frame was uh, £1,298. Just to give you an idea of where that quality is, it was actually on sale uh, for just over a thousand pounds at 1099 now you can buy this bike as the full build which we actually did uh, we brought that up obviously at the trade price now the full factory build is 2298 pounds on sale at just under 2000 at 109 1999 and 99 pence um, now that means that all the components that go into making a frame of bike actually only comes to 900 quid, which is a terrific price. Hence all those like landfill components that we've been talking about. So let's uh, break this down as if we're trying to create a bike that re that was the end result, which is something that we're really proud to own, something that we're really going to enjoy riding, something that really inspires confidence, you know, all those sort of things, which I don't think the stock build would have done. I mean, we saw in the video, that that crank set alone was almost a kilo in weight and those wheels are really nothing to write home about. So let's have a look where we ended up. Now, if you wanted to buy the Shimano 105 group set, 
you know, from the internet and do it all yourself. We're talking about 799 quid. Big, big warning here if you're going to do this because there are so many options and it's really hard to say that that is the price. And just remember that these group sets don't come with things like disc rotors. They don't come with um, brake adapters for the rear wheel, especially. Um, they don't come with a bottom bracket, those sort of things. Also check your gear ratios as well and things like your crank length. So what might look like a good deal, like when you're looking at it, uh, might not be the deal that you're looking for. So I think the 799 is fairly generous, but there we go. The the Vision Team 30 wheels, they, they're they okay to be fair. They're, they're a good set of budget basic wheels. They're, they they go around, you know, there's, there's not much more to say about them than that, to be honest. Uh, a 284 quid, they compare with a set of like Mavic Ascium, sort of uh, a stock set of Shimano's, that sort of thing, and built to a similar sort of quality. Have no sort of problem running them, but they're definitely not the nice, you know, nice carbon wheels that we want. Now that would come to uh, 1,083.95. So those two components alone, the group set and the wheels, is already more than that 900 quid that we would essentially get them to make a whole bike. And we'd still need to buy seat post, stem, handlebar, saddle, bar tape, bottom bracket, tires, inner tubes, probably a few brake adapters, bits and pieces as well, um, which would all come to about 115-ish quid. So the full bike looks like an absolute bargain, except for the fact that we get this just stuff that we're going to end up upgrading, switching out and going to and just going to going in the bin essentially, because they are quite poor quality components. They do get you rolling for a good price, but just at, at what cost? So this is where we went with our build. And we've talked through the video and on lots and lots of previous videos, how much difference a really good set of wheels makes to the, the bike. Like, like we could have spent twice that or even three times as much on the frame and we would not really notice that much of a difference except in the long term maybe. But changing out your wheels would change the ride characteristics considerably. So we went for those fast forward riots, 44 depth. Uh, so they're not, they're, they're probably aero, but they're not massively deep section. You'd feel the momentum, but you wouldn't necessarily think that they're aero, I guess. Running on those DT Swiss 240s, that was a little bit of a luxury, but that wheel set comes in at 1,500 and 45 pounds. Now, we talked in the video, those Pirelli P0s are just fantastic, confidence-inspiring tires. They're expensive. Uh, they're 61 pounds at the time we did this. They've just gone up in price again, but doing a deal with your bike shop will quite often discount wheel uh, or discount tires if someone's buying a wheel set and we're setting them up tubeless, that sort of thing. I think that's most bike shop to do something like that. Uh, we also wanted to improve the bar tape. So we're talking about an additional cost here of £1,639 for like the the extras that we kind of want uh, to make that bike. The crank set still uh, up for debate, etc. So this is like the comparison cost, if you like, is if you were to just try and buy all these components individually for where the bike that we've ended up, that we've just shown you, that frame, those tyres, the finishing kit, remember when we've got that used seat post and used saddle, if you were to go searching on eBay, this is roughly what you'd find. We kept the Tifosi bars and stem. Um, they're relatively cheap components, but um, they're okay, you know, they're, they're fine. The 105 shifters, these are the disc shifters, remember, actually quite expensive, but 368 quid, great. They're really hard to get hold of at the moment individually. They're okay as a part of a group set and part of a whole bike, but individually they're quite hard to get hold of. Uh, rotors, they're okay quality. You can spend three times that amount on disc rotors, but we budgeted here for 42 quid. Uh, a front mech and a Shimano Road bottom bracket is now 59.99. It's inflation. Um, we've got to also factor in some of the used components that we that we took from this customer's old bike. So the Altegra cranks, again, searching through eBay, we've roughly about 160 quid for a set of good quality used where we're not having to change chain rings, that sort of thing. 
a used cassette. It's hard to say because we don't really tend to sell them used, but 49 quid. Uh, and a rear mech, actually, we can find for 55 quid in quite a lot of places uh, used. So that would give us um, a, a comparison cost of this bike build at £3,869. But uh, coming to us, you know, as, as a bike shop, we are going to do a little bit of a deal. And we said, well, okay, well, we'll buy back that Shimano 105 cassette because one day we're going to need that in the workshop. Same with the chain. And the same with the crank set and bottom bracket. Now, I've, not all bike shops will do this. We um, we actually have a, a local club here and a local sort of race circuit. And this sort of thing is actually quite good for youth racers because it's kind of the right gear ratios for them. And for people that sort of crash a lot when there's a learning crit racing and that sort of thing, it's, it's quite a good option, um, relatively cheap. But that was probably us being a, a bit generous. Uh, buying that back other sort of deals that we we'll do uh, to help get that price where we need to be for our customers which i'm pretty sure everyone would do we throw in that bar tape for free we did the free bottom bracket and we did the half price tires and the labor cost involved in this which is about two and a half three hours labor um you know we take all that off and so we get down to that sort of three thousand 400, 3,500 pounds type of, of area. Now that's the price I want to hold in your mind because that's what we're going to try and to compare what you could buy um, for stuff. We're going to take into account that we're still left with a frame, a set of shifters and some wheels that we can eBay and just looking at online prices, that's the sort of prices we think. Which So the actual overall cost to, to you would probably be somewhere like just 2,905. Now, like I say, don't... We'll, this is obviously very, very dependent on your own situation. So just going back to that big 3,445, what can we buy for that? Now, if I just go onto a, a kind of online bike shop and just price search for that, I actually found this from Wiggle. Um, this is an Oro Gold STC DI2 road bike. And this is quite a good example of the marketing department overtaking the engineering department, I guess, because um, the headline features are all there. But if you really know about bikes, you're not necessarily going to get to what you want. Now, I know that if a market survey went out there and said, what do you want in your bikes? Oh, yeah, I want a carbon frame. Um, yeah, I want good gears and all that sort of stuff. But when you actually speak to a customer like we do, when you really drill down into what it is that they're looking for, it's normally like, you know, I'm, I'm going to go and do these long distances. I want to just feel confident in my bike. A um, little bit nervous about all the potholes and going down steep hills. Um, or maybe it's like, I just want to feel like I can hold a line or I'm doing these big long rides. You, you get the idea. Um, it's a much more personal type of thing. So rather than just going... I want a electric gears. I don't know why, but you know, people have told me that they're good. You know, we're trying to drill down into what emotions, what feelings we're trying to achieve by owning a bike, you know, and it normally comes down to things like confidence and comfort, um, sense of feeling fast, sense that, you know, when I put the power down, that it sort of lunges forwards and reacts how I want it to. It's those sort of things that we drill down to. Now, so this Oro is, <laughs> this is, this is, this is exactly what I mean. So this comes with all the stuff that like the headline thing. So carbon frame, tick, yes. Uh, it's got an Altegra DI2 group set, tick, you know. And then after that, you, all the compromises start coming in. So the Fulcrum R500 DB wheels, they are, <laughs> do you know what, they're, they're they're not bad for a really, really entry-level bike. But the argument is, why on earth have you got entry-level wheels and an absolute premium group set? It doesn't make any sense because the premium group set doesn't inspire confidence. It, you know, it's the, the fact that you can switch your gears with the press of a button is a luxury, is very pleasant. And unless you've got like really bad wrist arthritis and that sort of thing, then it's, you know, it's just... It is a luxury. 
Um, I've no denying that electronic gears are lovely, but I would never choose them over a set of really good, fast, confidence-inspiring wheels. That's for sure. Things like the tires, because then we have like Continental Grand Sport Race, which are, they're sketchy tires. They're hard compounds. They're, they're just, they're not good. So the contact patch, the bit that you connect with the road is quite low quality compared to all the money that's going into essentially the Altegra group set. And, you know, that Altegra group set isn't cheap. I'm going to flash that up on the screen. I haven't researched that. I wish I had now by the time I recorded this. So, um, yeah, going through going through the rest of this, it's actually got 5236 chain rings on what's an endurance bike. I think that's too big for most people is that that gear ratio is definitely a sort of flat racing type of gear ratios. The, the rear cassette, 11 to 30. Most people, I guess, for where we live anyway, are choosing at least 11 to 34. Um, it's really only people that are racing that are going much smaller than that. Even the fittest people I know are still choosing that 11 to 34. Um, but we do live in the mountains, but uh, your mileage may vary, as they say. And then the finishing kit really is nothing to write home about. The Dida 01 is actually quite quite good stuff from the handlebars. The seat post is similar sort of landfill as you saw as you saw before. So you know this I and I bet you you will not be able to find a bike around that sort of price point that has really good quality fast carbon wheels you know with all those things that we have on those fast forwards brass nipples sapping cx rays you know that that really is where it makes the difference so have we have we achieved our goal um of creating that bike that we want to feel proud of that we feel really confident riding that feels fast that's just and i think we have for the price i really think that we've delivered this customer a fantastic riding experience at a very competitive price. Um, it's got the ad added benefit that we've given it our care and attention in the build. We've really tidied up that cable routing, done a lovely job of the bar taping. Um, we've made sure all the tires are seated properly, that they're full of sealant. It's literally ready to go. So yeah, that's what I think. Love to know what you guys think. Have you taken on a similar project like this yourselves? Have you gone into a local bike shop and had a similar experience as your local bike shop not interested? Are they more interested in just trying to sell you uh, what's on the shop floor and, and that's that? Okay, that's all for now. Thanks for listening.